Hello guys, this is Dr. Ghazi. Uh, I'm here <clears throat> to talk about the stress today. Um, I would like to thank uh, uh, YMCA for uh, allowing me to uh, talk about this topic. Let me start by uh, introducing myself. Um, I'm a family physician. I'm currently working with Baptist Primary Care at uh, Regency Square Boulevard uh, location. Um, basically seeing uh, primary care physician uh, patients. And um, today we're going to talk about uh, stress. Um, and, uh, you know, it is one of the most common symptoms that we see uh, in our day to day practice. Um, and it, it, the reason for today's talk is basically that, you know, uh, it has its role in um, the pathophysiology of a lot of other um, medical conditions which uh, contribute to um, uh, um, complications and uh, general well-being of uh, most of our patients. So today we are going to um, do a, a small talk and I, then I will welcome any questions that you guys might have regarding this topic. Um, the talk basically is the effect of stress on um, different parts of our body and uh, different systems of our body and how it's um, gonna um, affect our well-being basically. So uh, stress itself is not a disease you know it is a, a, a normal response of a body um, and our bodies physical bodies uh, have uh, certain roles in each different each uh, part or system of the body has its um, a physiological role and uh, during certain periods or situations you know um, our body response uh, and that response is basically normally required, especially in the cases of fear, fight and flight. And, uh, um, you know, when this becomes a chronic uh, uh, issue, then, uh, you know, sometimes it can develop into a disease or a pathological phenomena. So um, basically stress is a normal a physiological or emotional or behavioral response to different uh, changes in our environment or in our uh, self. And uh, stress is required for normal functioning of the body, as I said earlier, and it is required for excelling in the life. So having a mild to moderate stress is actually required to be successful in our life. So, you know, we cannot get rid of stress altogether. And the analogy that I usually tell people is that it's like friction, you know, we, uh, or gravity, you know. When we walk on the uh, 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 on a surface, you know we need some sort of friction. If there is no friction, you know, we'll stumble over. Same thing, uh, you know. Uh, in order to succeed in life, we need a little bit of stress um, and to be successful. So it's it's stress itself is not a disease, you know. That's the message. And a mild to moderate stress is required for the normal functioning of our day-to-day uh, -day life and for our health as well. You know, if we are stressed about our health, then we can take care of it if we are, you know, uh, if, but if it becomes uh, too high of a stress, then it can start affecting our physical and mental well-being. So the next question I have is, what is well-being? So well-being uh, and health, there are two different terms, you know, well-being um, is uh, basically not just one thing, you know, it is a combination of, um, eight different things, you know, um, which are required in order to have a complete healthy state. Um, and physical is just one, physical well-being is just one of them. The other examples are environmental well-being or social well-being or um, your um, occupational well-being, um, your social well-being, so on and so forth, and spiritual well-being, which is also a very important contributor to our health and well, um, wellness. Uh, spiritual well-being uh, basically determines, you know, um, our internal uh, state of uh, peace and uh, harmony with our physical beings. So uh, what causes stress? You know, the next question is what causes stress? Anything, uh, any positive or negative change in our day-to-day -day lives can cause stress. Uh, common examples of stress could be, you know, uh, um, you know, a, a sickness in a loved one, for example, or you know, positive things could be getting mad, it can cause stress, or uh, buying a new house can cause stress. How can we, um, you know, identify 
uh, the pathological stressful um, things from the you know, normal physiological things. It comes with practice. It comes with a little bit of reflection. And that is important to, uh, you know, uh, step in determining how we're going to deal with that stressful situation. And, um, you know, a lot of factors come into play when we are dealing with this kind of thing. Um, like your, you know, environmental factors, your well-being, your brought up, your, um, you know, financial issues and so on and so forth. So uh, the purpose of having this uh, talk is first to identify, you know, the effects of the stress on different parts of the body and then how you can deal with that stressful situation uh, to mit mitigate those effects or to prevent long term chronic complications in stressful uh, situations. So uh, first thing, um, as far as the uh, effects on, of the stress on our body is concerned, um, you know, I would like to uh, emphasize that it affects our, um, you know, all systems of our body, but as, um, specifically it affects certain vital organs. Uh, and that is because of the release of certain hormones in our body. Uh, we have certain hormones like, uh, you know, sympathomimetic hormones, which uh, such as cortisol or adrenalines, which are uh, is secreted to uh, provide our fear, fight and flight response in case of a stressful situation. Um, and they are required, you know, as you know, it's a survival mechanism. Uh, but when those hormones are released uh, at a constant rate uh, without any interruption, they can cause uh, physiological changes in different systems, especially your um, uh, cardiovascular system. You know, uh, stress is number one contributor of um, heart disease or heart attacks. You know, um, myocardial infarction or coronary artery disease is the number one cause of uh, the heart attack. And uh, as far as um, the, you know, the effect is concerned, as I said, you know, it causes a constriction or narrowing of the heart arteries and constant release of cortisol causes elevation of our blood pressure. And elevated blood pressure itself um, is a disease. And, uh, you know, we do a lot of things to control our blood pressure, including, uh, you know, low salt diet and exercise. Uh, constantly elevated blood pressure contributes to the heart disease and stroke, for example. In addition to that, uh, because of the chronic uh, relate, uh, you know, stress, um, there are studies, medical studies have now identified that um, it can affect your um, brain uh, to the extent that it causes the atrophy or shrinkage of the brain cells. Um, brain cells um, obviously are required for normal functioning of other cells of your body. It does affect your memory uh, short term and long term. So stress itself is a cause of, uh, you know, short term and long term memory issues. And it depends on the, uh, the, the duration of the stress. It depends on our individual responses uh, of uh, the stress and its effects. One uh, more thing which I uh, would like to emphasize is uh, changes in our uh, hormones, especially uh, the, the cortisol and its effect on other hormone systems such as uh, reproductive system or thyroid issues. A lot of people, especially the young females, you know, they come uh, to our offices with the thyroid problems or, you know, a PCOS kind of problems. And they have, these diseases have uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, uh, syndrome and uh, hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism can be related to the stress. Um, the stress itself is not the only thing that causes these diseases, but we do have their, um, you know, uh, the role of stress in the pathophysiology or formation of these diseases and their outcomes. Similarly, you know, in young males, you know, it can cause problems with the sexual desire, um, social isolation. Uh, decreased testosterone levels, um, and um, in females, you can see the decrease, a change in the menstrual cycles and um, the responses. As far as um, um, the other systems are concerned, you know, um, in our day-to-day -day life, we see people with asthma uh, or um, respiratory problems. They can have exacerbation of their asthma because of a stressful situation. In addition to that, you know, people can present with um, um, musculoskeletal problems like chronic neck and back pain, which can be uh, the underlying, uh, you know, basic cause could be the long-term stress. Um, and um, 
as far as the gastrointestinal system is concerned, you know, uh, people can have uh, chronic stress-related ulcers. Um, they can uh, present with bleeding and um, problems with the motility of the intestine. Um, people who have irritable bowel syndromes with, uh, with the problems with the chronic constipation or diarrhea uh, can have an underlying mechanism of, um, uh, of uh, stress which is causing or contributing to these things. In addition to that, you know, uh, uh, stress can also delay the absorption of the nutrients from the intestine by uh, making molecular changes uh, at the and decreasing the or changing the microbiota of the gut you know changing the bacteria um, and lining of the uh, of the gut as well as the bacterial flora of the gut and, and that can contribute to constant um, uh, problems like diarrhea or constipation um, as far as the immunity is concerned, you know, uh, we, our body is made up of certain immune cells which contribute to this. And um, because of the stress, you know, um, are, there are certain uh, immune cells uh, such as lymphocytes, their uh, mechanisms are changed and their amount is changed and that can lead to the um, decreased immunity and increased likelihood of the cancers. Somehow I cannot see the comments, uh, so I apologize. Uh, I think I'm having some technical issues here, but I will try to look that and try to answer all the questions that you might have. Uh, other things which uh, uh, you know lead to uh, blood clots. You know, um, stress also affects uh, the uh, formation of the blood clots, and it increases the um, platelet aggregation and can contribute to the blood clots that we see mostly. Last but not least, you know, mental health, you know, because of the stress, we see a lot of anxiety and uh, depression. And then some of some of the peoples can have um, acute stress disorder. Acute stress disorder is a mental, um, you know, uh, illness or disease. It is different from the physiological stress that we are talking about. Um, the acute uh, stress disorder can uh, be um, uh, you know, it, it can manifest itself as different uh, physical symptoms. And um, most commonly people would have uh, inability to sleep or insomnia or, um, you know, uh, flashbacks and stuff like that. Uh, so basically uh, acute stress uh, could be is usually less than one month duration and some people can have post-traumatic stress disorder, which are primarily uh, depression, um, mental health issues. Um, so Coming back to our physiological stress, what can we do to um, mitigate or um, deal with the stress? As I said earlier, you know, we cannot uh, uh, eliminate stress altogether. It is required for the normal functioning of our body and uh, for our well-being. And um, we can change our response to the stress. We cannot, um, uh, you know, eliminate it altogether. And recent medical studies have shown that it is not the stress which, uh, you know, harms or kills a person or increases the morbidity or mortality. It is our response towards the stress. You know, the fear of having stress can cause uh, more complications than the stress itself. So it's, a, it's an important point. So um, basically uh, what I usually tell my patients is uh, to identify the triggers of their stress. And uh, it is the most important um, uh, first step in recognizing, recognizing what is causing it. So um, if we have um, a list of triggers, you know, we can divide them into, uh, you know, what is treatable or what is uh, fixable and what is, you know, what, what is unavoidable. So avoidable and unavoidable. So basically, if you have uh, an avoidable situation, you know, you can avoid that. And sometimes if it is unavoidable, you basically change your response. And the change of response basically comes with the practice. And there are certain uh, strategies that we use uh, basically to uh, decrease our um, uh, increased stressful response. And the, the, the strategy that we use is called um, a relaxation response and relaxation response uh, is basically in, can be induced by several different techniques um, and and a, a few of the previous talks we have learned about uh, the breathing exercises and we've learned about uh, um, 
uh, you know, stillness or uh, meditation uh, therapies and yoga uh, is an example. Um, basically, uh, relaxation response is uh, uh, diverting your attention, taking a deep breath and uh, rethinking what can be done differently or delaying your response. Science has shown us that if you delay your response uh, by three minutes, your response will be totally different to a stressful situation. For example, if somebody hits your car, you know, instead of jumping uh, to the conclusion and going to um, uh, respond that immediately, if you delay your response, you know, you basically have a different response uh, by the time, um, you know, you, you act on it. And that delayed response basically, um, you know, uh, helps not only uh, the whole general situation, but also helps our well-being as well. As far as other strategies uh, um, are concerned, uh, which improve the resilience, which is resilience is basically our ability to bounce back in, in the face of a stressful situation. Um, how do we uh, improve our resilience? Uh, one of the things or strategies that we use is called mindfulness. And mindfulness is basically being present in the moment, paying uh, 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 cognitive attention towards what's going on and, uh, and rather than diverting your attention towards the things, uh, you pay uh, a close attention uh, and be present in the current moment. An example of this uh, could be, you know, uh, a lot of us are uh, busy on our screens, you know, especially our um, social media, you know, <laughs> and uh, we're not paying attention to what's going on in our immediate surrounding or what our role is in the immediate surrounding. So we are miss on, missing on certain things. So um, mindfulness is being present in the moment. And uh, mindfulness-based uh, stress uh, uh, reduction can be done in a control setting, like in an educational uh, uh, classroom model. Um, and, and, th and that is done with the help of a counselor or uh, a mentor who can uh, guide you. Then certain, the meditation techniques you know, are important. Recent medical studies have shown that if you meditate on on daily basis, there are certain areas of your brain which are more stronger than the other, like brain matter changes. Uh, this is called neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is uh, a very hot topic these days and a lot of research is being done. Uh, so people who respond to the stressful situation by uh, uh, diverting their attention and uh, doing meditation on daily basis, they have better outcomes. And, um, you know, as doctors, we have seen, you know, people who are spiritual and practice their spirituality, you know, their outcomes are pretty good in, 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 the, in the face of, um, you know, acute stress or uh, diseases like cancers um, and uh, their uh, outcomes are different and, um, you know, that helps. The third thing which helps is uh, mindfulness in motion or mindfulness uh, in movement. Uh, example of that would be yoga or Tai Chi. You know, these are the, uh, year, you know, centuries old practices which are being done uh, for a long period of time. And they have uh, shown uh, to be effective in terms of um, your response to the stressful situation or dealing with the stress. What else can uh, you do? You know, uh, the, one of the technique is uh, called uh, positive talk. Instead of uh, having a negative uh, you know, talk, you should uh, uh, talk self-talking into a positive uh, uh, state or positive uh, talking piece, uh, towards um, uh, your, your response to a stressful situation. You can convert that into a positive uh, way. For example, you know, if um, you know, you're thinking like, I cannot do it, you can say, you know, um, I have done much uh, better things uh, in the past and I can try uh, and do better. So self-talk to uh, convert a negative thought into a positive thought is important. Same thing, uh, similarly, you know, um, there are certain other phenomena that happen when people are under stressful situation, like we catastrophize, you know, we say, oh, this is the worst thing that can happen to me. Or we can polarize things, you know, we can say, oh, uh, you know, all things are either good or all things are either, you know, bad and there is nothing in between. So these are a few things that we need to deliberately pay attention to and change our response. And as I said, stress is a constant um, uh, phenomena in our life. 
uh, as long as we have we are living and we are successful and we are trying to uh, improve ourselves we need a little bit of stress uh, moderate to severe stress can uh, you know cause constant changes in our um, physiology in our body's ability to cope with the stressful situation and that can lead to chronic complications both physical and uh, mental uh, such as depression anxiety ptsd and so on and so forth so it's important to uh, pay attention uh, it, it's important to um, uh, you know uh, practice the mindfulness it is important to uh, relax uh, to learn how to elicit the relaxation response and all of this comes with the daily practice you know uh, we just have to try um, de uh, you know deliberately and uh, give it 5 to 10 minutes every day um, and uh, you know some people who pray on constant uh, you know on daily basis you know uh, they uh, have better outcomes in terms of their uh, mental um, and physical illnesses and their response to the stressful situation as far as other uh, tools that we use are uh, you know um, having our cushions you know having our uh, uh, um, uh, having our um, uh, uh, buffers in our life and by buffers i mean you know uh, our friends and family so basically if you have any stressful situation you know uh, uh, connecting with these people uh, is important uh, connecting with your loved ones is important uh, talking to a friend, talking to your family member, talking to your, you know, parents or, you know, your go-to people. It's very important to, um, you know, uh, invest your time in, in your loved ones so that, you know, when you need their help, you know, you, it's there. And it's amazing that, you know, science has recently shown that uh, when you hug somebody, you know, your body releases certain chemicals such as oxytocin and that basically uh, changes our, um, you know, response to the stressful situation, causes molecular and, uh, you know, cellular changes which uh, basically affect our well-being. Other people have different techniques, you know, exercise is one of them, uh, you know, when you're exercising on daily basis, your body is releasing certain chemicals which, um, you know, endorphins which uh, uh, determine your well-being and your response to the stress. Um, breathing exercises, you know, there was a wonderful lecture a few um, uh, weeks back uh, by uh, one of the doctors who uh, taught us about the breathing techniques. And then the role of sleep, you know, sleep is very well connected with the uh, with the insomnia, uh, with the uh, with the stress. Uh, you know, it can uh, the stress can contribute to insomnia and lack of sleep can contribute to stress so it's a it's a it's a um you know um very uh, dynamic uh, relationship so uh, you know deliberately trying to pay attention to your sleeping patterns is important and avoiding and practicing good sleep hygiene like going to bed at the same time and avoiding uh, you know looking at the screen uh, for a few hours before going to bed all of these minor things you know they contribute and uh, you know determine whether we will have like insomnia or lack of, uh, you know its effects on our um, sleep and uh, um, or on our stress um, you know other things that you can do is um, you know um, seek help you know if if you um, have tried different uh, general techniques that do not work for you and your stress is getting uh, to a point where you cannot deal with it your, by yourself you know talking to your primary care physician or talking to your um, you know um, uh, the colleagues at work or friends you know th that all uh, helps uh, obviously one of the topic is work related stress and that in itself is a very big topic and i don't have time to go into that uh, but i Every day I see uh, patients who come and, and, they, and they tell me that their work is so stressful that it is affecting their well-being and all that. So, you know, it is something that, you know, there is no general rule for one person that I can give you, but every person is individual in terms of what kind of situation they are in, what kind of work they do. And there is a whole uh, lot more things that you can do depending on, you know, first thing is to identify whether it is um, you know, uh, it is affecting you to the pathological extent where, you know, you should continue it or not. And, uh, you know, also, you know, look for your resources. What are your, uh, you know, what kind of help do you have in that kind of situation? And, um, you know, then uh, 
practice how you can um, get better, get out of that situation. If you cannot, then and it is affecting your health to the extent that it is uh, not worth it, then you can make the decision to move on. Uh, in addition to that, um, um, I think most important thing is um, uh, paying attention uh, to all uh, your strengths and weaknesses, your um, resources that you have available. And, uh, you know, you cannot eliminate stress altogether. It's just your response and response you can change. That delayed response or relaxation response is the contribution, is the basic uh, uh, mechanism by which you are gonna deal with uh, the stress and keeping it to the minimum or to the uh, to the minimum level which is required to su to be successful in life. And if it goes out of control, obviously ask for help. Ask for you know your um, uh, you, you know um, uh, and try to practice these things that we just discussed. So it you know it was just a brief introduction to the stress. It is a very big topic, and I just tried to. Uh, talk about it in uh, in a brief uh, uh, manner, uh, but I welcome all any questions. Or uh, I'm so sorry, I'm having some technical difficulties, and I cannot look at any questions that I might have. But I will be happy to answer any questions uh, by replying, and feel free to contact me, uh, um, you know, later on. Um, and uh, I would like to thank uh, YMCA again for giving me this opportunity. Uh, to talk uh, briefly about this and uh, you know let's see if we have All right, I don't see any questions, but uh, as I said, I will be happy to answer uh, any questions that you guys might have. But thank you again very much for your time, and um, I'll be uh, happy to come again and talk to you on a different topic or uh, similar topics. Thank you. Have a good day.